people in the room can leave it now. <laughs> it's very, very introductory. And of course, we were not expecting so many people. We were expecting around 50 or 100 people. But you are anyway welcome, of course. <laughs> There's an issue of magnitude in this conference. Everything is very big. Um, but welcome. So I'm Federico de Maria, and he's Giacomo D'Alisa. We are two members of Research and Degrowth, a kind of uh, collective which has been working on degrowth and promoting the international conferences. And we do work especially in academia, but of course in relation with the social movement, civil society, and uh, practitioners. Um, let me just tell you what is going to happen today. So me and Giacomo are going to give an introductory lecture here, which is in streaming, I think. So hello to my mom. And um, also translated into German. After the uh, lecture, because it's impossible to have a discussion with so many people, the idea is that we will split in small groups. So we will have half an hour. I'll show you a slide. There is a list of facilitators, which are all R&D members and friends. And uh, next to the name, you will see whether they speak German or English. Most only speak English. And they will also have an expertise. So the idea is that at 4, at between 3.30 and 4, we leave from this room and go in smaller rooms. And facilitated by these people, you will have discussion. You could either discuss on general degrowth issue, questions that you have related to this presentation, or you can take advantage to the fact that these people have a specific expertise like ecological macroeconomics or the commons, and ask them to speak a little bit about this and then have a more focused um, discussion. There was also an idea to have a final get together from five to six, but that is canceled. So you can enjoy, have a beer and relax before the opening. So, the presentation we are giving today is based um, on a book that is the result of the International Conferences on the Growth that we have had since 2008. It's edited by Research and the Growth and it's a vocabulary. So there are 50 different terms that explains a little bit the streams of thought in the growth, but also the courses of action and the potential alliances. And uh, we, the editors, wrote an introduction which is an attempt of uh, describing and explaining what is the growth using all the terms and the entries that are um, in that vocabulary. So the lecture today is based on that and it's a very, um, it's an attempt, we could say, to summarize the degrowth literature and debate that we have had in the last 10 years. I see nobody's leaving the room, so I'm pretty worried about that. Um, what is it going about? It's, we are going to start with um, discussing a little bit on the definition of the growth. I'll give you some homework too. And then we are going to look at the history of the growth very briefly. And then um, discuss the growth as a vocabulary with the idea of the book that I just mentioned. And then we are going to also mention some possible lines of future research as there is still a lot to be done. So, we start with the homework. So, I would ask you now to write on a piece of paper or think about it in two or three minutes, which would be your definition of the growth? You can start. You just write one, two, or three sentences. You can write a book, too, I mean. Ha, ha, ha. 
I am circulating a flyer on the book with the table of contents, but don't get too distracted and don't copy the definition of the growth from there. So, I think most of you are done. So now, we will read all of them. No, I'm joking, so that's not possible, even though it would be nice. You can keep it, and the last day of the conference, you can think on whether your definition of the growth has changed. But if you want to make it a little bit nicer, uh, I'll give you one minute, and you can read it to your neighbor. And then when I tell switch, then your neighbor reads it to you. It's not a discussion. So one speaks and the other just listen. It's also an exercise of listening. Is that fine? Are you ready? OK, so you can start. Mono me go. It's working. OK, I will ask it now. OK, thanks. And what's your name? Marius. Marius. Come mio padre. Abbastanza, switch. No, no, aspetta. Mica io. Ok, you can, you can now switch. Listen to the one of your neighbor. Okay. Okay, I know I know you want to discuss more but we leave it there. I have a technical point. So, thanks thanks a lot. That's great and you can keep uh, discussing after. I would invite one or two people to read loudly a definition if it is short, if somebody wants to read it. Anyone who want to read it? We have one there. Somebody else? Okay. Thank you. Reducing the plague of people on the planet to a sustainable level in perpetuity. Thank you. And uh, we have Marius. Somebody up there? In the meanwhile, thank you for Marius, who is uh, giving up some technical help, and the other technical people that are supporting us, and the interpreter also to German. Thank you very much. Thank you. Degrowth is the name for an idea in which people become participant of the big and small challenges in the world today. Thanks. One more. Last one.
an economic theory that tries to change the relationship between the increase on the GDP and the well-being of the, soci the society. Thank you. That's nice. So welcome to the world of degrowth and the idea of defining it. There are lots of ways of defining it. We have three, but we have probably 300 different definitions in this room. If we look up at the literature, or easier in Google, for instance, one could look that somebody is arguing that the growth is an ideology, so a system, a complete system, comprehensive system of ideas and values. Somebody would not like that because of the negative connotation of ideology. Somebody would say it's an economic concept. This is also sometimes not accepted because it's too narrow. We say it's something more than economics. Somebody would say it's a framework, or maybe in social movement theory, what is called a frame. Uh, a name that mobilizes a lot of people, like uh, anti-globalization, for instance. We could say, hopefully, it could be a paradigm, but maybe too early to be a paradigm in the sense that Kuhn um, understand it, in, in the sense of a way of creating <coughs> new research questions and new research agenda. Of course, it's doing that, but as strong as we would like it to be. We could also argue whether it is a social movement. Somebody would say it's an incipient social movement. Somebody would say it's already a consolidated one. But there are many different ways of looking at the growth, and these are just a few examples. But the premise, some, uh, and what we have argued also in our previous work, is that the growth is placed at the junction of several sources, of what we call streams of thought, which cross each other without being in competition. What do we mean by sources? We could think of ecology, democracy, ecological economics, critique to development, well-being perspective, which could be when we hear summa causa or so many other expressions in other languages, etc. So each of us normally comes from one or two different perspectives, and we met in the growth. So this growth is becoming a big river, which is the junction, which is the connection of many different small, smaller rivers. And also when we look at the definition, we could try to list them in categories. So the easiest one and the nicest one would be the naive one. So it's a decrease in GDP. It could also imply that, but it's more sophisticated, more complex than that. Uh, we could look also at Wikipedia, which is very influential. And it says it's a political, economic, and social movement based on ecological economics and anti-consumeristic and anti-capitalist idea. That's why not, but it's a little bit broad, a little bit too general, in my opinion. We could have an anthropological one, um, like on the work based by Giacomo, and we could say somehow a smooth reduction of the hypertrophied modern individual. So you could see that there are different visions, but the one that maybe has prevailed in the literature in the last year is the one that some ecological economists have given, which is the classical one. And we say it's an equitable downscaling of production and consumption that we reduce society throughput, uh, the metabolism uh, of a society, of energy and raw materials. That's good, but that's probably not enough. So somebody else, like myself, uh, with colleagues, have tried to complexify it a bit and tried to come out with a definition that would include the different sources that I mentioned before and the different uh, dimensions that exist in the growth. So we said something which is a, a small variation of the first one and says, the growth challenges the hegemony of growth. So this is the influence from anthropology, for instance, the idea of the decolonization of the imaginary and calls for a democratically-led redistributive downscaling of production and consumption in industrialized countries as a means, because the growth is not a final end, it's just a means to achieve environmental sustainability, social justice, and well-being. This, of course, I like it. I mean, I partly wrote it, too, but uh, it's not satisfactory. So at the moment, I would say that there is no comprehensive definition of, this gro the, uh, of the growth, despite there are various attempts. And we could discuss whether we need a unique one. In, a, in our opinion, I mean in mine and, and Giacomo, we need a comprehensive uh, uh, definition, but it is not yet there. So you are welcome to work on it too. And I invite you to have a look at this. So this gives an idea that the growth is not just about less, but it's something more than less. And of course, in the vocabulary also, we give a lot of focus on the issue of different, apart, of course, from the one of less. And this, I think, gives you an idea of why. 
But let's finish it. Let's leave it here with the definition now, and let's go back a little bit uh, to the history of the growth and how this all came about. So you all know this history, I'm sure. So again, you are uh, welcome to leave the room if you want. But uh, if we go back, we could be go back um, at the roots of the growth. We could be go back. In very old, we could say, uh, philosophies, religions, and traditions. So I would start today from Aristotle. No, don't worry. I'm not going to make that. <laughs> but uh, I will start from the 70s. But ones, of course, could go back um, much farther. And the first one to use the word degrowth was, um, we could say, the founder of political ecology, André Gortz. And uh, this is the first sentence in which we have found the use of the word degrowth. And he says, he's the herb balance for which no growth, or even degrowth, and he said it in French, the croissants, of material production is a necessary condition compatible with the survival of the capitalist system. Today we could say, is sustainability for which degrowth is a necessary condition compatible with capitalism? And I think this is still a very valid question today that is also going to be discussed in the conference. This is the first use of the word. Of course, we are in the context of the debates um, in Europe, at least, or in the West, on the limits of growth. There is in 1971 the Meadows report. But there are also very important and key degrowth thinkers, such as Nicolas Georgescu Rogan, an economist from Romania who work in the US. And this is um, a, a book came out in 1979. It's um, a series of essays by Georgescu Rogan, edited um, by two French um, professors, Jacques Greenwald and Ivo Renz. Jacques Greenwald is still around and still writes on the growth. And uh, we also found documents that prove that Georges Kuregan knew about this title and he approved it explicitly. So again, André Gors goes back uh, in 1977 and again refers to the growth and explicitly refers to Nicolas Georges Kuregan. And he says only one economist, Georges Corrigan, has had the common sense to point out that even at zero growth, the continued consumption of scarce resources will inevitably result in exhausting them completely. And this is because of entropy. Somebody might have heard of thermodynamics. Who hasn't heard about it? I mean, Wikipedia is pretty clear. But otherwise, those who want a sophisticated book can go back to the 1971 book by Georges Corrigan, which is called The Economy and the Entropy Law which is all about this. But let's go a little bit fast. In the 80s and in 90s, there is a little bit the end of, uh, or at least a pause in the debate on the limits to growth and degrowth. This is the idea, we could say, the moment in which the oil crisis, which would be a peak oil in the US, uh, was already overcome. And of course, there was the advent of neoliberalism. Uh, so at this moment, there is not so much interest on these topics. But then it is only again in, 19, in the beginning of the 2000s that French environmental eco activists launch again the idea of sustainable uh, degrowth. And they launch it as an idea of slogan. They launch it on a review, a French review, French environmental review, which is called Silence. And, uh, and here we have the start a little bit of the degrowth movement. I will go fast on this. I think you all know it. Um, but at the beginning, um, the debate started in France. Uh, there was a first publication called Objective de Growth, which is a book also translated in other languages. There was a um, march in France uh, led by Francois Nader with a donkey, uh, popularizing and disseminating de Growth. And of course, at that time, there was also the beginning of the French magazine La De Croissants. And the movement also spread slowly to other European countries. I would only mention Italy and, and Catalonia and Spain, but we could mention many more. And then, of course, there was a boom starting also with the conferences. But what, what, would be, what could we learn from the history, apart from the anecdotes that I like a lot, but they might not be of interest for you, is that in the 70s, we have really a focus on the limits to growth. It is more on environmental issues. In the 80s, we could say there is um, a debate, in France especially, on the idea of utilitarianism, huh? the idea that the anthropological foundation of economics based on the idea of utility maximization are expanding to all social sciences. And some people like uh, Alain Caillet, but then also Serzatou, started to criticize this. Um, and then finally, in the 2000s, we have people like Wolfgang Sachs, or Cesc Latouche, or Arturo Escobar, or many other people in the South also discussing the idea of the criticism uh, of development. And of course, Somehow, the growth is the junction of all this. 
those who are not familiar with these terms will have not understood anything I understand. But this is a very broad introduction, just to give you a broad idea of what this is all about. So, as I said before, the growth is the, at the encounter of all these different streams of thought, or currents, we could say. Uh, and slowly, slowly, because of them, the growth is also growing. And if you go back, uh, once the growth started to spread to many countries, um, in France, they also invented this thing of, oh, why not uh, have an international degrowth conference? And the first one was organized by Denis Bayon, Fabrice Filippo, and François Schneider in Paris. And then we had many others in Barcelona and Venice, Montreal, and now in Leipzig. And in the future, we don't know yet. Um, but the idea here is that it was a little bit to bring the debate up in academia. But also then, starting especially from the Barcelona conference, to try and merge and connect academia with social movement and civil society. Something that was not easy, because sometimes different actors have different expectations. But we are trying also, and it's also an experiment, um, to test new and we could say hopefully innovative methodologies of participatory uh, conferences. As I said before, the conferences were promoted by Research and the Growth. You can have a look at, on the web page what we do. We just had a summer school in, in Barcelona with almost 100 students. There was a meeting um, in France uh, of especially South European activists just a week ago. And we have also some contacts abroad. And for example, there is going to be a symposium, the first symposium on the Growth in India next week. So the Growth is really much uh, flourishing. What we do at Research and Degrowth, we are like 15 people. We started with a reading group, and then from there we started to organize events and activities, and of course we have contacts with other people, and the conference of course are not um, only the product of our work, but especially of the local organizing committee, which takes up each time the conference. And we decide on the pro next conference with the open call. Uh, we could say, I think, that we were quite successful in bringing the growth strongly into academia. There are now at least more than 100 scientific articles, and there were also seven special issues, most of them results of the international conferences, of which some of them we edited, but somebody else also did it. We could say that now the growth is also taught at the university, and even prestigious one, or so-called prestigious one, such as Science Po in Paris. And the growth is also very much part of the political debate in some countries and at some points. Even Sarkozy had to criticize the growth at some point, so that's quite positive. If they criticize you, it means you are becoming relevant. And it was also mentioned in mainstream media. So that, I think, is also good news. And um, I will leave it here. I've already talked for half an hour. And we are going to discuss a little bit about the vocabulary. You can have a look at the table of context, while which, which with the microphone. Thanks.